Welcome back. It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to go through the pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Tunde Kuala Wale, legal practitioner, is on standby. Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, my sister. Hope you are good. Very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, we'll take a look at the leadership. We'll start off with the leadership uh, newspaper this morning. The, the caption here says, 2023 CSOs kick against consensus as mode of choosing candidates. That's what you find. It's a bold caption as we head to 2023. Slam political parties for subverting popular will. Say consensus violate aspirants' rights and will undermine 2023 elections. Consensus won't give you presidency. Yakasai Sani tells Igbo. Well, it's, it's really interesting to, you know, hear this argument shortly after we have the Electoral Act as amended 2022 and giving precedent to uh, the issue of consensus as well, amongst other choice. Uh, you also have President Mohamed Buhari asked NAS to raise fuel subsidy to 4 trillion naira for 2022. Wants oil benchmark at $73 per barrel. Away from that, you also have another caption saying, outrage over fresh 15% uh, levy on Tokumbo vehicles. Insecurity resigned now, not in elders tell President Buhari. And just before we move away from uh, the leadership newspaper, APC National Chairman Deputy Vacate uh, Senate seats. That's also on the leadership and Easter, federal government declares Friday, Monday, a public holiday, and not for everyone. I mean, not for us. I mean, it's not like we're going to experience all of that, but happy holiday to everyone who will be holidaying. Uh, gunmen kill monarch, 23 farmers in Benway State. These are the stories on the leadership newspaper this morning. Away from the leadership, uh, our next port of call is the Nation newspaper. More appointees reside in state over electoral act. Uh, with a rider there, governors in force section 84, subsection 12 in Ondo, Quara Plateau, Aquaibom, others. Other stories on the Nation newspaper. Presidential ticket, why APC can't use consensus? That's on the front page of the Nation more stories, terrorists ask for millions of naira ransom on train attack victims. Oshun, INEC clears Oyetola Adeleke, 13 others, Lagos to begin issuance of driver's license. A jeep line sabotage cuts, okay, a jeep line sabotage cuts gas export. Crude oil production clips to 1.354 MB day. Buhari deplores heinous killings. Autumn calls for self-defense after a murder of 10 in Benway. North elders condemn worsening violence. And just below the red strip there, inheritance dispute, court orders Ndobisi Kano's widow to serve amended summons. Those are all of the stories you can find on the Nation newspaper this morning on the front page that is. Let's quickly take a look at the Punch newspaper and find out what's making the headlines uh, quite almost similar, but a little bit different from what's been reported. PDP consensus suffers setback. Zoning panel submits report. And that's the bold caption. Underneath, your several riders. Disagreement over zoning, best candidate, hindering consensus plan. That's what the party leader is saying. And Peter B's aid list condition for backing consensus. Atiku busy with campaigns. Should there be campaigning or uh, lobbying at this point and speaking, you know, we should have... Consultations, do say it in other yes. words. Yes, I don't know, but <laughs> campaign would really be, you know, against a violation of the Electoral Act. Away from that, I can defect, I can defend APC, says Wike. I, I beg to take that again. I can defeat APC, says Wike. That's the uh, governor of Rivers State. And Taraki meets Abio governor once again dumping consensus. 6,000 plus two attack victims displays. Buhari condemns killings, of course. And Oshun, INEC releases final list. OK's Oyetola, Adeleke, others. 
25 killed in fresh Benway attacks. Governor calls for self-defense. Self-defense. Mm. Army visit father of a shoon man tortured to death and uh, hide killer's identity. Osinachi, that's the artist that was killed. Suspect says wife will a wife yield before death and please verifies uh, the claim. Rejection of the UTAS will prolong strike, says ASU. Federal government to introduce online tracking for passport application. And the vice president seeks senator support, invites APC reps. And just before we move away from the punch newspaper this morning, Niger's oil production crashed by 400, 744,000 barrels in March, says OPEC. Kidnap train passengers not insured against terror attacks. Federal government officials are quoted to say, I mean, this is not an empathic statement to make. Northern elders be more in insecurity and ask the president to resign. Nine banks made 554 billion naira fees commission in 2021. This is according to a report, and these are the headlines on the Punch newspaper this morning. And the final paper we are reviewing is the Daily Independent newspaper. Rising insecurity, Northern elders ask Buhari to resign, say President can secure Nigerians. 2023 presidency, why Buhari gave blessings to Tinubu, Oshibajo, Amichi, others. I've not dropped my presidential ambition for Senate. Uh, Umaid is uh, quoted as saying, Federal government rejects 2021 World Press Freedom Index says Nigerian press among world's freest. Buhari asks Senate to increase fuel subsidy to 4 trillion naira. Nigeria's crude oil production dropped to 1.354 MBPD in March. That's according to OPEC. Akman Odoyedehe issues 24 hours ultimatum to Adamo APC chairman. Reps by appointment of customs CG from outside service. 25 persons killed in fresh attacks on Benway community. And the final one this morning, Adamo Kiari resigned from Senate. Senate passes controversial Peace Corps bill. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Tunde Kola, well, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thanks for having me. So let's start the conversation with the Punch newspaper. On uh, the top corner of it, it talks about the Northern elders uh, asking the president to resign over insecurity concerns. I mean, it's not really in our culture or in the practice, our political uh, environment to see leaders at every level, not to talk of the president, resign. But what do you make of this? Well, I think the call by the Northern Elders Forum is uh, not out of place. Uh, taking cognizance of the performance of uh, President Mohamed Buhari with regards to arresting the state of insecurity in the country. Uh, a few days ago, Professor Olesho Inka was also in the media where he said that uh, President Buhari lacked the capacity to really tackle and deliver to Nigerians a secure society. He also recollect that some weeks ago, President Muhammadu Buhari was rejoicing that in less than one year, he will soon be called our next president. When you review all these situations that I have mentioned, the impression that you get is that of a man, is that of a president who is tired, who has admitted that he no longer has solutions to the challenges of insecurity in the country. I also remember that we mentioned on these our programs, when a lot of people were making the noise that they should change the security chiefs, that once we change the security chiefs, 
the possibilities are that insecurity might become a thing of the past. And I argue that if you change the security to the chief security officer of the country a hundred times, there is never likely to be improvement in security in Nigeria. Because we are not tackling the problem from the very root. I have said it times without Mamba that the politicians are responsible for 50% of the insecurity that we have in the country. Then you have also the service chiefs who appear to me to be profiting from this insecurity that we have all over the land. It appears that insecurity is a way for the security chiefs to make their own money, just like the politicians are making money in the arena of politics. So, if you're going to have an improvement in security, you need to tackle the problem from the root. In particular, with regard to what is happening in Benin State and uh, Kaduna State, I will want to Tunde say... Kola, Tunde Kola, Wale, um, yes. La, yes. Let's, let's, you know, get back to this now. The Northern Elders right. are asking that the president should resign. We understand that we have 36 uh, states of the Federation, of course, including yes. the AFCT. Um, that would mean that you have governors who are responsible for their states. Why should the call be on the president to resign? Well, I agree with you. When you look at the security architecture of Nigeria, you and I would say that the governors have little or nothing to do with regards to providing security for their people. If a governor wants to use the commissioner of police, if a governor wants to use the director of CSS in their respective states, they have to take clearance from Mr. President. They have to take clearance from the IG of police, from the director general of GSS, from the army chiefs and war avion. Besides, like I said some other time, the security chiefs will not obey any order from any of these governors without being instructed to do so. It is for that reason we think that even though the governors take all security votes on a monthly basis, and we also do know that those of them who are serious, just like we see in the Lagos environment, where the government in Lagos has been proactive in establishing a security uh, outfit and then a mode of financing that security uh, outfit such that they have a security trust fund with which they have been able at least, so to say, 70% to manage the security environment in Lagos State. One would have expected that the governors in the other states to replicate what is happening in Lagos State, in their respective states. But instead of doing this, they are not doing it. Look at the governor of San Francisco. Just last week, he went and bought limousines for the EMEA and the district head in San Francisco State. He has also in the past bought and presented gifts to bandit leaders. So leaders of the bandit groups, for them to solve banditry. That is his own understanding of solution to the insecurity in San Francisco State. So if we want the governors to be able to perform with regards to security, the public will have to revisit the issue of state police, of local government police, of even universities having their own police. We also must revisit the issue of having a very strong local government. The local government is supposed to be the best bedrock of our defense 
Our first line of defense when it comes to security. But the government has destroyed the local government and nobody has been able to call them to order. If President Mohamed Buhari will not resign, as the other elders are saying, as most people in Nigeria are saying, then he builds the National Assembly to impeach him and also impeach the Vice President. Because both of them have committed innumerable impeachable offenses since they got into power about seven years ago. So, look at just this week too, I think a few days ago, the chairman of the Lagos uh, Chamber of Commerce, while addressing, I think, his members and all that, was weeping, not just with regard to the final state of the Nigerian economy, but the insecurity all over the federation. Benin has become a kidney field, Kaduna has become a kidney field, and somebody somewhere in Nassau Rock is rejoicing that in less than one year, he will become an ex-president. And All then right, you Pastor also Kalani. have directors of DSS, director general of DSS, commissioners of police, and not the different army and air force chiefs who appear helpless in the face of this security in our country. All right, Barry Sakala, because of time, let us uh, move to other stories uh, also All right. making headlines. Uh, let's move on to the leadership and newspaper. Uh, 2023 seems to be on the lips of um, several people, politicians, yeah. Nigerians, um, CSOs, and, and so many. Now, CSOs are kicking against consensus as mode of choosing candidates. And from, where, from what we have been feeling, the body language of uh, some of the political parties that we've been hearing or been uh, perceiving talks of uh, consensus for you know, the presidential ticket, what's your take concerning this? There is no internal democracy in most of the political parties that we have in the country today. The political parties are the ones who are expected to encourage, who are expected to teach the electorate the culture of voting for a candidate of their choice. But to find out, most of our political parties want a quick fix solution so whatever challenges or problems that they might be having internally, in order to eschew rancor within their rank, they go for the peace of the graveyard. And until there is internal democracy within the party, until the parties begin to allow people, allow their members to vote whenever there is an opportunity they let their flag be arrested whenever they are going to have their pension, or their, their, I mean, their convention. They will not be able to demonstrate to Nigeria that this democracy is growing, that this democracy is workable. What we have now, like I said, is a situation of the graveyard. And we should not throw out the baby with the bathwater just because we want a fix, a good fix solution to whatever dynamics, voting in party primaries, voting in conventions will generate at the end of the day. But when you suppress people's aspirations, when you ask people to come and take form, and they take this form with millions of naira, at the end of the day, you say you are going to use consensus. You have merely suppressed these people. You have made them unhappy. We have brought with anger within the rank and file of the members of the political party. Sooner than later, those anger, those frustrations, those disenchantments will blow out. And the things that you have either though wanted to get will evaporate in your very face. So we should condemn in all its ramifications this culture of consensus among all the different political parties. Especially the leading ones. Today, Kola Wale, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about, you know, the sincerity of the civil society organization. We understand the back and forth with that section of the Constitution. I mean, the fact that the president was, there was a lot of back and forth with altering uh, that particular clause. And at some point, 
you had the fact that that section of the Constitution 84 uh, was accommodated. And then, of course, it includes adopting the direct, indirect, and the consensus. So I'm, I'm wondering how, you know, where the civil society, yes, we know they were speaking, but to what extent do we have their impact and influence on some of these issues? Because it feels like we're just going in circles and we're asking for almost the impossible at the time where we had the opportunity uh, you know, to exact that influence. So what's the essence mm. of talking about it now that it's now becoming an act? Because, you know, the Electoral Act 2022 uh, has accommodated the issue of consensus. Well, let's see. I think you have been very generous with words this morning. <laughs> we are not moving in circle. It's all motion without movement. We aren't moving anywhere. Well, with regard to Section 8412, I think I'm in support of Mr. President. That provision of the Electoral Act is a very, very selfish one. Very, very selfish. The people who are in the legislative arm of government merely wanted to use it to deny their fellow politicians an opportunity to participate effectively in politics. Furthermore, we already have provisions in the Constitution, which says that uh, appointed political officials should resign at least 30 days before they participate in any election. I should want to say that that provision is sufficient to take care of whatever anxiety, to take care of whatever ambitions that the people in the National Assembly may have. Because when you look at it, like I, earlier, like I said before, nobody gets political appointment. If you are not either a member of a political party, a supporter of a political party, a financier of a political party, or even a friend of any of these politicians. So in a way, there isn't any difference between the people who are appointed and those who get elected as politicians. They are all playing the same game. And all of us cannot be in two places at the same time. Some have to be by appointment. Some have to be elected. Some even have to be behind the scenes, being the principal and the think tank. I think that provision should be removed from the Electoral Act to have a level playing ground. And in order to allow these political appointees to enjoy their right, their freedom under the Nigerian constitution to participate effectively in politics without let or hindrance. It might just be a little bit too late for us now, looking at the timing of the elections. Well, the court has already had the, that provisions of the electoral act down all, if I were the president, required to do is to summon the political parties, the leaders of thought, and the National Assembly to allow the Attorney General of the Federation uh, to respond that uh, provision from the Electoral Act. The Nigerian Law Reform Commission is also empowered to do it. So, but to find out, uh, the people in power today are never proactive. They never have a long view of history. They're too comfortable with the little that they are doing. They never want to set themselves to get a better result for all of us as a nation. All right, uh, Barista Kolawali, uh, let's uh, talk on um, other stories uh, still on the Poncha newspaper this time around. Um, <clears throat> There are several stories. Let's just uh, find one to pick here. Oshibajo seeks senator support, invites APC reps. Uh, the vice president is still making consultations here and there concerning um, his uh, presidential bid for 2023. Well, these are very, very interesting times with regard to the ambition of Mr. President and the lifelong ambition of uh, Mr. Tinobu. 
the vice president you to me. Like, you you mean the vice the president? Week. No, both uh, the vice president and uh, the Ashwaju, the leader, the so-called leader of uh, APC. Their ambition, presidential ambition, okay. in a way, there is a kind of uh, a tangential relationship between the aspirations of those two people. So, but with regard to the vice president, I would say that under the Nigerian constitution, he has the right to aspire to become a president, especially having become a vice president. There are very few people who have been vice president in any country that will not one day dream of becoming the president. It is his right. But when you take a country look at history, the number of vice presidents who eventually became president are not very many. It's not very good. Very few of them ever get to become president if they have been president in whatever country or the other. They may find themselves. But what? In Nigeria, Oshiba Joma is setting the president by succeeding his um, uh, boss, which is Mr. President Buhari. When I was referring to the actual due ambition, is that I've been reading on the social media and the newspaper all sorts of divergent views with regard to the aspirations of um, Mr. Vice President. Some see it as backstabbing, some see it as treachery, some see it as a betrayer of Mr. Tinobu, that because Mr. Tinobu nominated him as vice president and he eventually got it, he ought not to be contesting against the same person. Some people even refer to him as a son of Mr. Tinobu. Even Mr. Tinobu has come out to say that he doesn't have a child who is as old as the vice president who aspire to become uh, a president. The implication of that is that uh, both of them are already throwing barbs at themselves. And their supporters are already fighting dirty on the pages of newspapers and on the social media. But let's, let's give it to the two of them that under our law, both have the right, a fundamental right, to aspire to become president. But the truth of the matter is, when you look at those two candidates, none of them is fit and proper person to become the president of Nigeria. For Mr. Oshimbato, he has been president. And under our law, the constitution schedules him with the responsibility to manage the Nigerian economy. Has he performed well with regard to the management of the Nigerian economy? The answer is no. Under his watch, under his uh, supervision, the Nigerian economy has totally collapsed. No, but to the Kola Wale, you know the argument, um, of course you're a legal practitioner, a lot of persons have said that the, the office of the vice president is that of followership. Yeah. I mean, he has to follow the lead of the president. And if you also follow the trend, you probably would have seen uh, a bit of a conflict at a time where the president had left a certain time outside of the country where he transferred powers you know, to the vice president. And afterwards, it's been a big deal because a lot actually changed in his absence. But not to, you know, dwell on that particular issue. Let's really uh, move away and look at the issue of fuel subsidy and the fact that we might just be uh, up for more spending for us. Now, the president has asked, you know, the National Assembly to approve um, from what we were supposed to have subsidy for 2022. We're looking at 442.72 billion naira to 4 trillion naira. That's a lot of money. A colossal sum of money. Now, let's, let's ask ourselves, if we find ways and means to raise that 4 trillion naira. From where? And pump it into the repairs of the comatose refineries that we have all over the country. We will not be better off as a nation. I think we'll be better off now you are borrowing money 
in a way also to say to buy food, to eat, instead of uh, borrowing money to till the ground, to cultivate agriculture, to plant your own food. That is the implication of the move that Mr. President is making of trying to borrow money, four trillion naira, to subsidize petroleum products in the country. In my humble opinion, that is not a direction in which this government shows the moving. We would rather teach ourselves how to fish than depend on other people to feed us. At least Mr. Dangote has shown that building a refinery is not rocket science. If an individual can build a refinery and numerous immense plants all over the country, why would a nation of 200 million people not be able to run four refineries or thereabouts all over the country? The reason why they don't want the refineries to work is very, very simple. If the refineries are working, they will not require again, or they will not have the opportunity to be importing petroleum products. And when they don't have the opportunity to import petroleum products, they will not be able to export Nigeria's money to send out dollars with which to go and search to buy property and send their children to school. That is a simple logic. Otherwise, I don't see any reason why we should not be able to maintain simple refineries in this 21st century. Furthermore, with regards to what you said about uh, Mr. Shimbacho, you see, Ole Tree, he is a very good speaker. He went around the country when, most of the time when the president is not around to douse tension. And I tell you, the challenge that Nigeria has today requires somebody who knows the nitty gritty of economics, not uh, marketing, not showmanship, not Ole Tree not excellent in debate, such as uh, the vice president has. The port is still congested. The vice president has tried several times and several days and have been able to find solutions to that problem. Also look at his records of the period you mentioned. I challenge you journalists to go and check the kind of contracts that he awarded when the president was away for six months, also check most of the people that he has nominated to either be minister, to the ambassador, to be members of parastatus. Each time he had always had opportunity to nominate people for some of these posts. I think the so-called integrity, the so-called probity, the so-called... Uh, a lack of corruption on the part of Mr. Vice President is a ruse. He doesn't have the wherewithal to manage Nigeria. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Barrister Tunde Kolawali, uh, for all of your input uh, on um, of the press today. We do appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. All right. It is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from all of the press, we'll go back this day in history and see what actually went down. And when we'll come back, we'll be bringing our first discussion on the table to join us again.